Fat Mike is a very opinionated man who made a career off a pointed stage banter. He's directed his shots at everybody in the punk scene. And today, we're going to go through five of Fat Mike's biggest beefs, and we're going to determine if they're a joke, if they're that serious, or if there's real, deep-rooted hatred involved. Hey ladies, Dan Frampton here, and today is all about the beef. Okay, first a little context, I guess. We're talking about no effects, and in particular, the bass player and frontman and brains of the operation, Fat Michael. Now, depending what era of Fat Michael we're talking about, he could be dressed like a dicky short skate punk, he could be dressed like a fucking really sad clown, or he could be dressed in your auntie's lingerie or whatever. But it doesn't matter how Fat Mike is dressed or how he's presenting himself, he is still out there ruffling some feathers and getting a little bit controversial. You see, Fat Michael didn't really grow up with a drug problem. He didn't really grow up with an alcohol problem. He went to university and got smart and did that whole thing before developing an alcohol problem, before developing a cocaine problem. And these things are things that he wears like a badge of honor. But all of those elements thrown into one pot make for a really polarizing individual. Some people love him, some people hate him, but you cannot argue the guy has endured 40 years in the same band. And not only the same band, all the original members are still in the band. But we're not here to talk about the legacy. We're not here to talk about the enduring staying power of the punk rock power group known as NoFX. Not at all. We're going to be looking at the dramas that Fat Mike has gotten himself into by using his dumbass mouth. Some of it justified, some of it not, some of it blown out of proportion, some of it fake, some of it real. We're going to determine all of that here today. So for this first example, we're going to go to this song, Woe on the Woes, which the first time that I heard it came out on this here record called 45 or 46 songs that weren't good enough to go on our other records, but it was included in one or even two seven inches that they released earlier in the 90s. Either way, the lyrics to this song are very telling. Woe on the woes. I'm just gonna read these bars, it's not very long, and we're gonna deep dive into who he hates and why he hates them. We never like to sing woes. We love woes. We're against woes. We hate woes. Now, hate's a very strong word. They hate woes. They prefer ahs and na 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 nas. And of course, yeah, yeah, yeahs are all right. And here comes the first call out, and it's a two tiered call out. Between AFI and The Offspring, I don't think we need anyone else to sing any more woes. We hate woes. We're against woes. We hate woes. Now that's a lot of strong language. They're against. They hate. They don't want any more woes. And the people that are singing the woes got to be associated with those words as well, right? He got to hate the offspring. He's got to be against AFI, right? Now reading between the lines, that's how I personally would interpret it but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. But if we just look at the history of The Offspring, that record smash blew up on Epitaph, being the most widely sold independent record of all time. And that was when No Effects was on Epitaph as well. So you know there's gotta be a little bit of jealousy going on there. So they're gonna be out there calling some shots and throwing some people under the bus because you know what? No Effects is better than that. They stopped playing ska and they stopped doing woes. So between AFI and The Offspring, is this beef real? Is this a long lasting drama? I gotta say no, not so much. I don't think that there's anything to this one. This one's just fun. This one's just a good time. Now the next one is also gonna come to us in the form of lyrics from a song. And this one comes from the song Creeping Out Sarah. That is the Sarah from Tegan and Sarah. Now back in the day, I remember when this was going down, uh, the internet kind of lost their shit because the lyrics to this kind of have like an anti-gay sentiment but not really if you, you peel back and look at the context. That was just the narrative floating around on the internet at the time. And he kind of wrote this song like a journal entry, like he does this and then this happens. So we're gonna read it and then kind of break it down. I was backstage at a festival in Germany, talking to a cute, fair-skinned brunette. I asked her if she wanted to have a beer and if she liked our set. I noticed that her hair was longer in the back. I figured that's cause she's Canadian. Now already, this is a very comedic tone to this, you know? You got a mullet, you must be Canadian. That's why I was surprised when she told me 
she was fully lesbian. Now to me, I don't know if there's any anti-gay sentiment here. This is just funny. That's when I realized it was Sarah or maybe Tegan. I'm pretty sure that it was Sarah, because Johnny Sampson said she was the cool one. <laughs> you see, it's already funny. I told her I was a big fan of her band. She asked me if I had a favorite song. I admitted that I never actually heard them, but I liked KD Lang. <laughs> It's just, he's got punchlines. But of course, these are the kinds of punchlines that Twitter is gonna lose their mind over. I told her this Jew knows about the Junos. You see, Jew, cause he's a Jewish man, and Junos, cause they're the Canadian Music Awards. And how they got robbed three times in a row. And then I asked if she knew anyone who was selling pills or blow. <laughs> Come on, that's just funny. That's when I creeped out Sarah. Or maybe I just pissed her off. When I asked her if her sister and her have ever had a threesome where they both ganged up on one girl, a 4G or a fivesome. <laughs> Do they think strap-ons are groovy? And have they ever seen the movie Bound? And did they like Jennifer Tilly? Did they like Jennifer Tilly? I don't think there's any ridicule or mocking going on here when he mentions the strap-on, because I don't know if you've seen Fat Mike's collection of dildos and strap-ons. Sarah said she preferred Gina Gresham, Angelina Jolie in that Gia movie that was on HBO. And if these walls could talk, made Tegan cry a lot. After that, I almost forgot what she said. But that's the problem with Theazepam. <laughs> this is just a funny song written to be funny. So many times I don't remember, but I got a sinking feeling. It's not that I'm a clairvoyant, but I think I creeped out Sarah. I was creeping out on Sarah. I hope it wasn't Tegan, because Skiba said she's the cooler one. <laughs> it's just funny. But of course, Fat Mike had to respond to the controversy, and this is what he says. It's basically a true story. I was drunk. We did hang out at a festival and we were talking about sex. I mean, I'm dissing myself. I sound like a drunk creep in the song. So I don't know what the problem is. Their fans think I'm making fun of them, but I'm not. We had a really nice time that day. <laughs> it sounds so wholesome. Just a bunch of drunk punks, drunk indie kids in Germany playing a little festival. He goes on to say that the vinyl version was actually called Creeping Out Tegan. He wanted to play it safe and have both versions if it wasn't true. Absolutely brilliant. And then he keeps going. She told me, I think the song's rad, but a lot of our fans are giving us a lot of shit because we're not responding. And like paying attention to YouTube drama, I know that's how audiences are. They're like, hey, you're getting called out over here. Why aren't you saying anything? You look guilty for not saying anything. The quote continues here, because you're dissing us, but you're not even dissing us. And Mike said, I mean, how cool is that? She said that she's the cooler one, and she is the cooler one. <laughs> That's amazing. And then Mike closes this off by saying, we've been supporters of the LGBT community forever. We have rainbow flags on our fucking stage. We totally support that community. We call ourselves a gay positive band, not tolerant, positive. We think gay people are awesome and better than straight people because they're having more fun. I don't know how I feel about that last line there, but I'm not here to weigh in on that. I don't know anything about them having more fun. But again, that's Fat Mike. He's just like putting his foot in his mouth and saying a bunch of shit. I don't think it's anything to get really, really mad at. So Fat Mike, Tegan and Sarah, real beef? Nah, not at all. This one again is just a bunch of fun. But this next one is where it gets a little bit more real in 2006. Fat Mike kicks under oath off of Warp Tour. But at the time, Fat Mike was all like, I didn't kick them off Warp Tour. That wasn't what I did. That, what do you mean? This was Fat Mike at the time. Sorry, folks. As much as I do like controversy, there really isn't anything to report on the subject. Under Oath have left the Warp Tour. And as much as people want to give me credit for that, the truth is they really just needed a break, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Once you find out what happened, it's, it's so weird that he was talking like this. Some people have suggested that they bailed because I made too much fun of them. I kinda did. Yeah, yeah, he, he was definitely making a lot of fun of them. Problem with that theory is, is I've made fun of plenty of bands on this tour. Against Me, The Black Hearts, Anti-Flag, Sherwood, The Academy is. He goes on and on and on. And I bet I could make videos including all of these bands too. So he's not really taking full credit for them leaving Warp Tour back in 2006. But here's Fat Mike talking about that exact same situation this year. When Under Oath was on Warp Tour, I found out the guitar player, I asked him, hey, I hear you guys don't like gay people. And he's like, no, no, I just don't think they should be allowed to get married. <laughs> That's what I really heard. Fat Mike continues to say, 
I'm not comfortable with you being on Warp Tour with me. So I'm going to talk shit about you and your band every day. And they ended up quitting Warp Tour. I don't want someone who's actually homophobic on my tour. And that I all agree with. I wish that you just said that way back in the day, Mike. But it's cool that you're like saying it now, I guess. Back then, Under Oath really were like this sheltered band and they really were very, very religious. And I could really see how that would be diametrically opposed to everything Fat Mike was doing. So Fat Mike would be making fun of them for being Christians, for being zealots, for being homophobes. And that relentless bullying, that rightful bullying, because you can't have those opinions. Of course, you're gonna get ridiculed off of that tour. It's the Warp Tour. So Fat Mike didn't really have the power to kick them out, but he made it as uncomfortable for them to be around as possible. And then that's when Under Oath put out this brilliant shirt. Under Oath loves fat dinosaurs taking a big old jab at Fat Mike, except for this jab doesn't even make sense. This actually makes Fat Mike look kind of cool and like a badass T-Rex, but they're trying to make fun of him? They're trying to call him fat and old? I don't, I don't understand. It is a hideous shirt, but it doesn't do what they thought it was going to do. And this tweet of it is like, I love old band shirts as much as the next scene kid, but honestly, what were they thinking with this one? And then Chris Dudley from Under Oath comes in and says, Fat Mike from No Effect said we didn't believe in dinosaurs. So if you're super Christian, you can't believe in dinosaurs. That's the whole, that's the whole thing, right? The, the, that's not part of creationism, but whatever. So I could totally see Fat Mike incorporating your lack of dinosaur belief into his stage banter to make fun of you guys. And you making this shirt just proves his jokes to be even funnier. So this beef, fake, real, somewhere in between, I think that this one's real and I don't think it's been resolved yet, right? Why the fuck would it? Okay, now we're gonna talk about another real one. This is Ben Weasel of the band Screeching Weasel. Now, like I said, we're not doing a deep dive into beefs. I'm kind of interested in doing a deep dive on this beef, finding out where it started, what was the seed, what is the nucleus that started this beef. I'm not quite sure. We're kind of jumping in halfway through here, but this is still 11 years ago. We're gonna read here what Ben Weasel had to say. I think he posted this on his Facebook. Hey gang, Fat Mike from Fat Records and No Effects has a beef with me that I don't understand. It started about a year ago, but I thought it died out when he kicked us off the label. That's so fucking passive aggressive for supposedly making fun of him in a song. I don't think Fat Mike is above making fun of people in songs, as we've seen in this video. And he was probably just like making fun of you back to see if there'd be some banter. I really got to do a deep dive on this. But now he's back at it. I always thought Fat Mike was a straight shooter and I liked working with Fat Records. If you were making fun of him in a song and now you're saying this, you can kind of see where the hypocrisy lies in, right? But I can also see why it would have been a joke. It bothers me that he thinks I made fun of him in a song, since I didn't. <laughs> Just own it. If you made fun of him, he'd probably have more respect for you for making fun of him in such a public way. And then admitting it, like, yeah, I made fun of you. What are you gonna do, Fat Mike? He said a lot about that and other problems he apparently has with me in interviews and on Twitter. But he's never taken the opportunities I've offered to discuss it with me. I figure Mike seems like an interesting guy. So let's get him on Weasel Radio and hash this whole thing out like grown-ups. No, the grown-up thing to do would be in private, and online is for clout and money. <laughs> so you're just trying to make money off of his name, and I, he's going to smell that from a mile away. And after all of that, Mike replied on Twitter with just this. Ben Weasel, I have nothing more to say to you or about you. I am certainly not going to debate you. So please, stop bugging me. And that's not even where this stuff ends. In 2014, Ben Weasel puts out this huge open letter to Fat Mike because he didn't like how Fat Mike handled the situation on stage. And the situation that was handled on stage was resolved between everybody and it was all water under the bridge and he kicked up more dust about it. So what am I talking about? Talking about this. In Sydney, Australia, NoFX was playing a gig. Fat Mike was all like, hey guys, don't throw things on stage because like I have a sore neck. And then this fan got up and touched Fat Mike's neck. Fat Mike didn't respond very well. What Fat Mike did was he punched the guy in the face and then kicked the guy in the face. If you're a fan of professional wrestling and that world, you know that that's how you handle fans that jump the barricade. What makes this different is that this is a punk rock setting. 
but this is a barricaded punk rock setting. We're not getting a lot of stage diving here, and it came with strict rules. Don't touch my neck, I have a sore neck. So let's just watch it. Okay, Pat Mike is up there playing, no big deal. Okay, here comes the fan, grabs the neck, boom, back fist, kick to the face, the hat comes off. <laughs> Holy shit. Hell yeah, and then he just goes back to play in the bass. I don't think Fat Mike looks particularly bad in this situation. At first, I did, because I'm like, what, what are you doing, Fat Mike? This is like totally typical. You know, fans come up, grab necks, and do that kind of thing all the time. Why are you back fisting and kicking this poor guy in the face? But then I learned that there was a backstory. This is a barricaded show with a whole bunch of security. And Fat Mike was like, hey guys, just for tonight, I got a sore neck. Please don't throw things and grab me by the neck. And then, and then it happened. But what I meant by it being water under the bridge by the end of that night was this is the guy that got kicked in the face. He got to go backstage. Now I'm not gonna show this whole clip. TMZ is very serious about their uh, copyright. Anyway, look at this, this embrace, this hug, okay? Then Fat Mike gets the guy a beer. Very nice, so they're drinking beer, they're hugging. The whole time, Fat Mike is being a very funny, amicable guy, okay? Then he's like, you gotta kick me, okay? You're gonna kick me in the shin. And then they're going back and forth being like, no, don't kick me with your boots. That's actually gonna hurt. And this whole scene is very funny because of how hard Fat Mike kicked the guy in the face on the stage. And he's like, no, no, no. What you're about to do to me is gonna hurt too much with your boot on, so please take off your boot. And the fan's being nice. He's like, oh, of course, Fat Mike. Now you're Fat Mike. Thank you for playing my town. I'm gonna put on these slippers instead. So then the guy puts on the slippers. Everything's great. He's taking off the boot. He's putting on the slippers. And as you see here, there's a little spike where everybody's watching. This is where the kick goes down. He kicks him, and then Fat Mike still sells it like he got kicked with a steel toe boot. Very amazing, very wholesome. And then the handshake, most importantly. And after all of that went down, Ben Weasel thought he would crawl out from his rock for a little bit of clout chasing. And it was 2014 where everybody was calling out everybody. Cancel culture was just ramping up. Everybody was living in Outrage City. So Ben Weasel thought that he was gonna capitalize on that with this giant open letter. Now please go over to exclaim.ca and read this thing for yourself, because I am definitely not reading this thing right now. So this beef, is it real? Is it fake? Is it just internet drama? I think this one is absolutely real. But what I think the actual drama is, isn't anything like this. I think that Fat Mike just senses that Ben Weasel is trying to capitalize off of calling him out, kind of trying to piggyback off of Fat Mike's fame. And I don't really mind that generally, it's just how he went about it is so bad. All right, we have one more quick little beef one more quick little drama to get into, and that's no effects and the Eagles. Now, this one's just a little bit of fun. This is nothing really too big. Okay, we're gonna go over here to NME, and the headline is, no effects is Fat Mike. Eagles told us that our cover of their song was the worst they ever heard. But this one didn't even involve the actual Eagles telling this to the actual no effects, okay? The no effects got this from the manager of the Eagles. And I don't know why like Don Henley and the Eagles are sitting around listening to no effects cover and be like, oh my God, I hate this so much, but I can't tweet it out. Oh my God, ha hey manager, can you call them and tell them this sucks? Oh hey, hello, yes, you're the Eagles manager and so nice to talk to you. What would you like to talk about? A business dealing? Oh. Oh, the Eagles think our song sucks. Okay, true, bye. <laughs> so this drama, real, fake, nothing to it? Yeah, 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 fake and nothing to it. This is just a funny thing. A couple years ago, no effects really did face an actual cancellation for jokes made on stage, but that's not what this video is about. They ended up coming back from that and bouncing back from that more importantly. So I don't wanna rehash that and throw them under the bus for it because I don't think that it's fair. But Fat Mike is a very beefy boy. He likes his tea and his drama and his controversy, and I'm here for it every day. So thank you so much for watching. If you did like, please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you're cool as hell, and until my next upload, watch another upload.